Sometimes the shorter, easier looking shots may be actually harder than they look. Arcast data tells us that the average 10 handicap player only gets up and down 31% of the time on shots under 20 yards. This tip can help a golfer of any skill level master those chip shots. What's the first one? Uh, well, setup. We have to start with setup because if you can get in the correct setup, you've got a lot more chance. So what we're looking for here, really, when we're setting up, just a, I've got a what, a, a 20 yard chip and run. I've got a 52 degree. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the golf ball pretty much in the middle of the stance. I like to flare both feet out a little bit and we definitely want to favour this lead side. You'll also notice when I'm setting up as well that my right shoulder is only, if anything, a little bit lower than the left. It's pretty much the same. Um, that's what we want in order to get a good neutral setup. Unfortunately, what we see is we see golfers kind of stand to it like a golf shot where this right shot's a lot lower or they get the ball back like this and they get all these contorted angles which make you just stick the club in the ground and you duff it. So what we're after is a setup which allows you to allow the club to interact with the ground because that's so important when we're playing a chip shot. So should I play a couple? Yeah, I'll yeah, play, play one. a couple, yeah. But again, really soft hands from here, letting the club move back and through, chip it up there and let it run. And just, just do one, of the, one again there, just notice when Pierce does this, there's no excessive shaft lean, Pierce here, which no. we see a lot of amateurs make the mistake of doing. They have that shaft leaning forward, just demonstrate that for us where yep. we don't want to be. So it's generally something like this. I'm going to come over here because the, the ground's really beautiful where I'm chipping from. So over here, we see this ball go back like this and we see this here. And if you get that wrong, it's a bad one. That one wasn't too bad, but when you're curling up a divot like that, if you don't get the ball interaction correct, you're going to knock it a yard in front of you. Okay, so second thing we're looking for is the distance that the club travels. So what we're looking for is a club which goes back and through a pretty similar distance. So if we can get it going back and through, that's going to help us gauge the pace of the shot, but it's also going to help us control the loft, which is really important. And it's also going to help us control the contact when the club hits the ground. We don't want it to be in a, in a bad way, which sometimes we can find when we see golfers stand there and they have a, this is the common one, short back swing and a, and a long through swing because they're being told they have to accelerate. Don't decelerate. You can't decelerate <laughs> on your chip shots. We, we never see that, by the way. So if no. you're thinking about accelerating on your chip shots, be very careful. Be careful because you don't really want to do that. Yeah. Cool. So again, so the way that I like to do this, so this is actually a drill that you can do. If you can just set up, I'm just going to come around here so you can see this. So if I set up with the club shaft pointing ever so slightly left of my belly button, my arms are connected to my chest and I'm going to move the club now by turning my body. Now, it, this is kind of the motion that we want when we're hitting the shot. So nice soft hands and get the club moving with the movement of the body as opposed to doing it with the hands. You can do it with the hands, but it just becomes more inconsistent. So when I hit a few shots now, just again, notice that relationship with my arms and my body. And I think this is something we did with Sam a couple of weeks ago on a yep. lesson as well. We got him using his body better in his chipping. And it really does help you with the consistency of the contact, but also the flight, you know, the contact of the ground, the contact of the ball on the face. It really does help. Just hit me one more there. I'm just going to just comment on this because we hear this a lot with golfers. We need to keep the you know, stiff wrists. Piers, how stiff are your wrists here? <laughs> On a grip pressure scale, pull the club out there. It's that okay. easy to move it. It's probably around about a two. When I was really struggling with the yips, I actually was hitting shots, almost feeling I was letting go of the club as I was hitting the shot. That's how soft my hands were. So the wrists may appear not to be moving much, but they're certainly not stiff. It's more passive because the motion's being controlled by the body. And I think that's really important. Light grip pressure, passive, not stiff. Do not strangle the club to death. And the, it's a very good point, Andy, because the control of the wrists is coming from the movement of the body. I'm getting my arms into position, into my chest, like side, like so. And then from there, all I'm doing is I'm moving my body back. I'm moving my body through. That's what's keeping those wrists as we want. You can see how consistent these strikes are. Really, it's very hard to hit bad shots doing this as just, well. Just quickly, I mean, I should, can I have a look at this here? Look at the ground. I played every chip shot apart from that one over there. I played every chip shot from there. Now, there's not a lot of grass here, but yet I'm actually hitting it from the same spot all the time. And that's just because I'm able to collect that ball lovely off the yeah, turf. Using lovely. the bounce. Very nice. Okay. Okay, third, third and final thing. one. Third thing. Actually, I did one a lesson on Saturday. Uh, actually, no, yesterday, Tuesday, he was yeah. doing this and everybody t tends to come to us for coaching yeah. and they're doing the same thing on the chip shots. So I had the same lesson. Yeah. A different guy, obviously, okay. but it's exactly the same thing. So, OK, so um, third thing is allowing the club again to work with the body away from the target line. So basically what I'm going to show you is I'm going to get my super speed stick. 
I'm going to stick it on the target line like so. Oops. Nice target line, Piers. <laughs> I always aim uh, to the right, so that's a good thing, maybe. So what we're after when we're hitting this shot here is, oh, this is a little closer, Andy. <laughs> what we're going to do is watch this shot. So watch the club head as I swing through and hit this shot. So we can see the club head has worked very much, pulled it a little bit, but the club head has worked very much in from the target line. That is what we want. So when we are hitting a chip shot, we want to see that club head travel in and away from that target line as we're swinging through. What we don't like seeing is a club which flies down the target line like so. And I know Andy, we talk about this all the time. As soon as we see a club go that way, we see a head, head go drop this back. way. Yep. We see duffs, we see thins, we see disconnected arms from the body. Just understanding the concept of where the club should be moving. It shouldn't be going in a straight line. It shouldn't be traveling down that stick there. It should be swinging in from that. And just do this again, yep. Pierce. And when, um, just notice when Pierce finishes here, as a result of this, look how his chest and his body's facing the target. Look at all the pressures now into his left leg. He's not sort of leaning back and scooping it. This is what's going to make chipping really easy for you. Just doing these simple things, allowing that club to move in. And look, video yourself from the front on view. And if you like, like Andy's saying there, if you see any of this coming back behind the golf ball when you're chipping, that isn't going to work. This is what gets the ball up in the air. You don't need to help it into the air.